I'm the youngest of three sons in my family, and when we were growing up, at the time it seemed very fashionable as well to dress the children in the same outfits. And I don't know if you did this to your children. I'm not sure if you humiliated them in this way or not, but the Parks boys were in like sailor suits and things like that. And I have a nice picture of it actually, and kind of glad that we grew out of that. I'm also glad my mother realized that we each had a different and unique personality. So instead of completely matching outfits, she went to coordinated outfits next. And not sure if that was any better, but at least it did allow us to be a little more individual. We were not cookie cutter children. And each one of us, even though we had similar interests, also had different ways of how we went about living our lives, growing and maturing as well. In many ways, it's like that with the apostles. We use that term apostle. We probably have an image in our mind of what an apostle is. One kind of cookie cutter image of someone who floated on the clouds, was always nice and friendly, had a beautiful history and just said wonderful things. And really that's not the case. They said wonderful things, but they went about it each in an individual type of way. If you look here in our church, from the windows up top, there's 12 of them, the 12 at each one of the ends, the three at each end. They represent symbols for the apostles, the original 12 that were chosen by Jesus. And so the Lord called them into service each with different gifts and talents, and so they each were able to go about preaching the good news and spreading the faith in a different way. And, and that's what they did. That's what they were called to do. So today, as we celebrate Peter and Paul, now Paul was a little bit later, so he's not in one of the windows. He was not one of those original 12. But we celebrate them, yes, as apostles, meaning that they were promoters of the faith that they were sent forth in order to be able to persuade others into the beauty of the faith, to teach them how to be witnesses of faith, of truth, of hope, and most of all, witnesses of God's great love. So we take Peter, for example, today, and we look at Peter and we realize that Peter was very human. There's quite a history that he had with Jesus between his stubbornness, his enthusiasm, but also his way of kind of always having uh, a weakness that came out. But Jesus had confidence in him that no matter what Peter did or how he denied him, Jesus still loved him. And Peter absorbed that love. He was open to it. So for Peter, he was strong in his faith that after the resurrection, after the ascension, after Pentecost, Peter was truly filled with the Holy Spirit to do the work that Jesus had called him to do and to do it as a leader. So when he went to Rome, it was there that really the foundations of the church were very much set. And it was not easy for Peter. Our first reading today speaks to us of how he was in chains, how he was locked up, he was persecuted as those early Christians were. But God loved him so much he sent an angel there to be with him, appeared out of nowhere and just suddenly vanished out of nowhere to be able to free him because he had a mission to accomplish. When Jesus asked Peter, well, who do people say that I am? Peter gave a good response. You know, you're a prophet, you're like Elijah, some say Jeremiah. But Jesus challenged Peter and said, well, who do you say that I am? What is on your mind? I want to know what's in your heart. And Peter spoke from the heart. He said, you are the Messiah, the Son of God. And so for that, Peter, Peter was rewarded and given a great task, a huge task, to be able to forgive sins, to be able to be a rock, to be able to be very solid in the beginnings of the church and praise the Lord because 265 popes later, unbroken succession there, we have the beauty of leadership, of apostolic succession in the church. And that's something that we celebrate today. Even though Peter shed his blood, that's why we're wearing red, and we honor these two saints today, we go a little out of the ordinary time calendar. Next week we'll get back to ordinary time. 
but we'll be able to be in ordinary time for a number of weeks then until Christ the King. But today we honor them because of their role in the early church, because of how they were apostles, promoters, persuaders, sent forth. St. Paul composed over 31% of the New Testament. So for St. Paul, we celebrate him also today. He was different than Peter. Peter maybe had a, a stubbornness, as I mentioned, and he had a joy for life, as did Paul. Paul had more of a, a great conversion story. He had a great conversion story being thrown from a horse, going from being a persecutor of Christians to being one of the biggest promoters of the Christian faith. So Paul also was strengthened. God had a special place for him and a role. His letters talk about how the faith grew, how he was an evangelizer, how he was sent to be able to meet people where they were at in their Gentile life and bring them where God wanted them to be. That's what evangelization is. We don't go just throwing our faith at somebody else, talking about Jesus, telling them how they should live their life, you know, we see where they are at. We say, well, how can we kind of work together for be developing and having a heart that is on fire for Jesus Christ? To have a heart that is on fire for the beauty of our faith. Peter and Paul, my friends, were sent to the peripheries of the Mediterranean. They did not stay just in one place because if they had, we wouldn't be here today. No, they went forth, they went out, they, they went above and beyond themselves and what they thought they were capable of doing in order to spread the good news. And my friends, that's what God wants of us as well. Apostles didn't live just 2,000 years ago. They live today. They're sitting here in this congregation. We're here in this building today as modern-day apostles being asked to be promoters, persuaders, being asked to be sent forth, being asked to receive the word of God, the beauty of the sacraments, and going to the peripheries and spreading the faith. And that means that the work of the church is really done outside of these walls and outside of 1020 Montgomery Road. The work of the church is done by each one of us as you tomorrow go to work, as perhaps during the week, maybe you go to a family reunion or a 4th of July party. How are you going to spread the faith? Perhaps during the week, if you go over to Red Hot and Boom, along with the other couple of 100,000 of your closest friends during the week, you're kind to others. You don't push and shove, but somebody would say, wow, that person was really nice. They smiled at me. Maybe you gave up your parking spot for someone else. That's kind of what being a Christian is all about. And it's going out there in order to be able to be an apostle today. Peter and Paul are honored today because they did great things. There's no doubt. And certainly they were special. But they are special in God's eyes, not because of the great things that they did, but rather because they were chosen. Rather because they were chosen by God. They were loved by God. And so are we. Today, as we celebrate these great apostles, how do we receive that love of God? How do we say, Lord, I want a personal and intimate relationship with you? Lord, as I sit here today in church, how can I receive the grace to be able to speak about you wherever I go in the next days? At work, at home, at Red Hot and Boom, maybe in your neighborhood. How can we make sure that people know that what we are, that who we are is a Christian and what we believe is the church that Jesus Christ founded, that Peter and Paul nurtured, that we ourselves are asked to carry on. How are we, his apostles, today 
in 2014.